outro cast. <laughs> well, Peter, I'm going to say good afternoon. Is it good afternoon or good morning for you? Uh, somewhere in between, uh, you know. <laughs> there you go. And uh, dialing in from the home studio, is this where you made your new record? Uh, well, no. Uh, this this is more my sort of home home project uh, writing space. I do do some overdubs here. I did do some overdubs from the record, but mostly it was recorded uh, down at Fame Studios uh, in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Uh, and my uh, old studio, uh, Moon Palace NYC, uh, back in Brooklyn, New York, before I moved to Nashville. So Alabama, Tennessee, New York, you're just used to always being on the road, I guess. Yeah, 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 pretty pretty much. I have been for many, for many, many years. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you can so, say that. Before I ask a bunch of questions about Saturday night, Sunday morning, I'm wondering how often you get emails and calls that are meant for the other Pete Levin. <laughs> That's a funny, funny, funny story and question. Um, it, it happens occasionally, not, not as much as you would think. I don't really get emails or calls. It's more like people just aren't familiar that there's kind of two of us out there. Really yeah. more, there's more. There's like, you know, a good buddy of mine, who grew up around the corner from where I went to school is also named Pete Levin, you know, so it's a pretty common name, you know what I mean? But uh, uh, the, the fact that we're both musician, musicians and keyboard players um, is, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a little ironic sometimes. Um, and yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, you know, people think that I'm him or, vice versa or so so it's made for some interesting um interesting uh stories sometimes for sure yeah there's there's you two and then there's the two mick joneses there's the one from foreigner who produced right. Van Halen, and then the clash mick jones right exactly it, there's it, also <laughs> there's also a few mike campbells you know right. the mike campbell that uh the reggae you know, guy and yeah. then the heartbreaker right exactly exactly so, yeah, it's been interesting, um, you know, every, every once in a while, you know, and I run into Pete every once in a while. I, I try to go by Peter. You know, yeah. I used to go by Peter. He goes by Pete. Um, but, you know, every once in a while we run into each other and, you know, he'll, you know, he'll, we'll exchange stories about who thought who was who and, you know, things like that. So it's, it's it, 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 you know, it, it happens. It happens every once in a while. Well, on a brighter note, you do have that new record, Saturday Night, Sunday Morning, that I alluded to earlier. And it has a collaboration with your mentor, Greg Allman, on it. Yeah. Fantastic record. Was it a hard one to make, like I think it was? It was. It, it was it was it was hard for a few reasons. Um, you know, uh um I started recording the record um that you know uh, uh, a couple greg passed in uh may of 2017 i right. started recording the record in august of 2017 and um i also you know was recording it at fame which is where we recorded greg's last record um southern blood so mm -hmm. you know it was kind of hard emotionally you know as you can probably imagine um uh but 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 i you know i i had worked at fame a bunch prior to recording that record with Greg. You know, I've been there with the Blind Boys a few times and worked with a few other people. And fame was kind of like a second home, is kind of like a second home um, for me. You know, um, uh, the folks down there, sorry, the folks down there, um, uh, re, you know, they, they, they uh, Rodney, uh, Rodney Hall, Rick Hall's son, um, and a few of the folks down there, we sort of revamped, you know, uh, the new, we call it the new fame gang. So it's a bunch of, bunch of uh, musicians that are down there now that kind of play behind a lot of the projects that come into town. So it's really like a second home for me down there. And I felt really comfortable going there and I wanted to record the record there because, you know, the place fame meant a lot to me and my connection to it meant a lot. And, you know, obviously, you know, Greg and the Almond Brothers have a huge connection to fame studios. Dwayne, especially with all the studio studio stuff he did down there, 
so going there was definitely, you know, it was tough emotionally. Um, uh, and, and it was also, uh, you know, it was, you know, uh, it was also tough in the sense that, you know, we recorded a bunch of the basics, but I was really on tour a lot. I was out on the road a lot. So it was tough logistically because, um, you know, we recorded the basics to about 20 tracks, 18 of which made the record. And um, I had to, you know, um, go back and forth when I was off tour to, you know, uh, you know, fix things, add vocals, add percussion, you know, uh, uh, special guests, whatever the case may be. So it was tough emotionally, logistically, right. you know, um, you know and, 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 you know, kind of in those ways, you know, um, but, you know, I, I wouldn't have traded it for anything, you know, it, it, I really feel the record turned out turned out great, and I was you know really fortunate to to have so many uh, amazing musicians and 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 people behind the scenes work on it. You know, folks like Don Strigley who mixed and mastered it. He's no longer with us, but he was a he was a long time Muscle Shows um, engineer, mixer, producer. You know, mm -hmm. worked with everybody over the years. I mean, everybody. You know, and uh, you know Rodney Hall was there, sort of kind of giving me some guidance and things like that. And I had, you know, um, guests like Jack Pearson and the Blind Boys of Alabama and Spooner. Spooner Oldham played on a track, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was very, despite, despite you know, the hard aspects of it, it, it was really an amazing, an amazing process, an amazing time. And I wouldn't have traded it for anything. So I put Greg in a very rare category of rock icons where not only was there commercial success, but there was critical acclaim. Not only are there the songs that you hear on classic rock radio, but he also had hits in the MTV era. So therefore Greg stands out the way that say an Eddie Van Halen would, but in the case of Greg, um, his legacies can continued on through you. Uh, we see his sons are continuing on with musical projects and yeah. it's really his legacy is continuing on in a wonderful way so kudos to you for keeping him alive and well through this new record are there plans in place to be touring in support of the record um yes yes there are you know i'm i'm i i i'm slowly uh uh you know booking some shows i i i play uh i'm playing up in new york city uh october 27th I'll be, you know, supporting the record. Um, I have a show in Nashville on November 15th. So um, right now they're few, few and far between, but my plan is to book some more shows and really, you know, like you're saying, and, and push the album. You know, I've, I've done so much touring and, 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 uh, and uh, recording and producing for, for other people, yes. you know, over the years that, you know, it's just taken a little time to sort of, plot my own course in in that way so i've been talking to some promoters and booking agents and you know slowly but surely we're we're making it happen so in terms of being a session guy and a producer some of your credits are musically the exact opposite of greg and your solo <laughs> and right. by that i mean metro station train gym class heroes now sure. seeing those three credits in particular does that mean that you're very much in with crush management like I think you are? Well, uh, yeah, I you yeah, those are those are some old friends of mine. When I was living in New York, um, you know, this was gosh, this was must have been in the early 2000s probably. Um, a good buddy of mine, Sam Hollander, who's a great producer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, you, yeah, Hollander, you know Sam. Sam yeah, yeah. So yeah, Sam's great. Um, you know, we've known yeah. each other forever, going way back to to you know the old New York City uh uh you know uh uh clubs like Nightingales and Wetlands and stuff like that. Yeah. So um yeah, Sam basically brought me in as a house guy for crush management. And um you know, they had their they had their spot on 11th, uh, 11th Street down by Astor Place. Yeah. And I basically, you know, had a little office there. And, um, you know, it was it was a great it was a great time. It was a great relationship. You know, Crush Management was bringing in all these bands and, um, you know, Sam would funnel me, funnel me the, the work. So, you know, through them, I, I, I did a you know, I did a lot of stuff like you're saying, you know, Metro Station and 
gym class and, and, um, and, uh, you know, train, um, you know, but, you know, it was also, you know, pr pretty much any, any bands that Crush was working with that would come through there um, if they needed, you know, keyboards or, or, you know, some production type stuff. Um, I was the guy, you know, so it was a great relationship and, you know, John and Bob were super cool and um, it was, it was really great. You know, it was also, you know, I also worked on, you know, Panic at the Disco and, and a lot of those, I guess what they called emo bands at the time, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it was really, it was really cool. It was fun. And, and, you know, I mean, it was great. I got on records that sold millions and millions of copies around the world, you know? So it was, uh, it was, you know, it was, it was um, very special, but yeah, the music was certainly way different than, you know, than Greg, Greg and even the blind boys and, and uh, a lot less auto tune on Greg's records. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so but yeah, no, it was really, it was really great. It was really fun. It was a great hang down there. You know, the, the, the folks from the bands would always be coming through and, and, you know, we would, we'd have great hangs and laughs and, you know, it was, it was a special time for sure. So putting that all together though, are you an accidental sideman? In other words, did you start off wanting to be the singer songwriter or is it the other way around where you're a musician and then you had songs and went, well, I might as well record them. Right. Right. Uh, you know, that's a good question. Um, you know, I've all, I, I guess, I guess it's been sort of a parallel thing. You know, I've always going, going back to when I first, you know, kind of put my own band together in college. Um, uh, I was always sort of playing and performing my own original music. Um, but over the years, as I sort of, you know, became a better musician and a little bit more in demand over the years, I also was doing a lot of sideman stuff. Um, the challenging part was trying to do them at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, like I would get a lot of offers to go out on the road. So then I couldn't really do my own gigs. I had to get pretty crafty. You know, sometimes I would, I would open up for the bands that I was playing with, you know, get hired to play with things like that. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was really in parallel and depending how my schedule was, I would, I would, I would either be doing more sideman stuff or more of my own stuff, you know, more of my own right. stuff. I'd say probably the last 10 years um, I had been doing a bit more of the sideman, you know, the sideman stuff, you know, once I started, um, kind of getting a reputation coming out of the, you know, crush management stuff and, and, and things like that. You know, I was, you know, people were, you know, asking me to do a lot, you know, a, a lot of session work and stuff like that. And I was doing that. I was doing some producing and, uh, you know, I was playing my own gigs, but I wasn't touring under my own name. You know, I was, I was touring with other folks, whether it was, you know, uh, like I say, you know, the blind boys or, or, uh, or, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, bands, you, you, know, you know, just bands I've been, you know, w working with at the time. So I'd say probably about the last 10 or so years, it's been a lot more sideman stuff. And then especially when I moved to, to Nashville, um, it's been hardcore sideman stuff, you know, working yeah. with folks like Amanda Shires and the High Women and, and doing a lot of sessions down here. Um, but uh, I, you know, I, I am looking forward to sort of getting back doing doing my own thing as well as much as much as I can. But I would have to say that they were sort of in parallel, you know, uh, uh, over the years, as best as I can manage. Interesting. Well, two quick questions, and then I'll let you go. And the first one is being that not every keyboard player can handle the Hammond like you can. They can handle the classic stuff there. Did you ever have a metal phase or a hard rock phase where you – you were trying to do the John Lord stuff. That's a great question. Um, you know, I I still am a huge Van Halen fan. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. You know, obviously they're not metal. You know, I, you know, you can classify them as rock or maybe hard rock. But but I would try to transcribe a lot of Eddie solos on oh, on, really? on on the Hammond. Oh yeah, um, and <laughs> uh, and. Um, uh uh you know as far as the like metal rock you know sure i was a, a john you know a john lord fan but i was more 
I got a lot of that more from like the prog rock side, like yes, Genesis, you know, uh, 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 bands like that. So, so, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, um, there weren't a whole lot of bands that were, that had a Hammond organ that, you know, that were, that were in, you know, that were in the rock world, you know, um, but, you know, uh, John Lord was, you know, definitely one of them. I, I love the sound that he got out of his Hammond. Uh, but, but the music that, um, kind of the, the, the Hammond music from that side of things that, that really drew me in was more like, you know, like I say, the prog rock kind of side from when I was into it. And then I sort of, you know, gravitated into other, into other genres, but, but, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was definitely, you know, way into, um, you know, and still am. And so, you know, rock and some hard rock, but, 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 uh, but uh, uh, never so much into the actual metal, metal side. I appreciate a lot of it, you sure. know, musicianship wise, but, but it wasn't necessarily, um, you know, the, the music that drew me in. You know, well, and my stupid last question here, <laughs> and before I ask that, we'll again plug Saturday night, Sunday morning is a great artistic achievement of yours that you're going to be supporting with dates, et cetera, et cetera. But related to all the hard rock metal stuff, one of my obsessions is my favorite artists having artists uh, on the side of the stage or under the stage playing the keyboard parts and you go down the list and you too has had that for decades that that guy has his name on the web his website and he admits it but he's under a gag order and kiss had it on tours i recently found out van halen on multiple tours had an offstage keyboardist motley crew has the hammond buried on shout at the devil in the mix etc <laughs> now do you have any gigs in your history where you were there you were like the offstage or hitting keyboard player um, not really. No, most, 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 most of my gigs, um, I'm, as I'm trying to rifle through my head right now, most of my gigs, um, I, I have usually been, been on stage. Sometimes I'm a lot further back in the, in the, in the mix, you know, like for example, uh, I used to do a pop gig with this, um, Panamanian artist, this guy, L, L, uh, L Yenaral, the general. Yeah. Uh, and it was a pop gig. And, and um, you know, I was way, way, way back there in the distance. Um, but I was on stage. It's funny you mentioned that I did a, a band I played with in the 90s, um, uh, which was on Sony 550. We did some touring with Blondie and uh, and, um, uh, you know, the, the guys in Blondie's band liked the way I play. So the guy that was doing that gig that was teching and and uh playing you know kind of behind the curtain so to speak was getting ready to move on to some other stuff so they actually sounded me on on you know and, and kind of offered me the the position but um but uh which which was which was amazing and I was super thankful for it but I just didn't feel it was the right the right kind of fit for me you know I I I I, I enjoy being on stage and you know even if I'm not the the central focus which is a lot of the time as a side man you're not the central focus but i enjoy the you know the the the, en the energy and the feedback from the crowd and watching the other musicians and catching eyes when something cool is going on you know what i mean things yeah. like that so that that was more my speed you know which, which band on uh five, before i let you go which band on epic sony 550 were you in it was called danger man danger man okay one word or two one word, one, one word. word, and uh, Brendan O'Brien, uh, wow. yeah, produced the record, and uh, yeah, it was a, it was a good record. I mean, it was a studio record. It was very meticulously put together. So you know, we we so it 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 wasn't necessarily um you know uh uh free on stage. You know what I mean? But it was fun while it lasted, which you know which was, uh, you know, a bit short-lived, but yeah. That, that uh, cracks me up if you go down Brendan O'Brien's producer credits and says, Pearl Jam, Rage Against the Machine, yeah, Springsteen, Danger Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. I've got some homework to do, but in the meantime, 
Uh, Peter, thank you for the many years of great music and looking forward uh, to the New York gig and just keep up all the greatness out there. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It really means a lot. Thanks for the kind words. Outrocast. <laughs>